This entitled mother thinks that the whole world revolves around them. So to teach her daughter a lesson when she doesn't get her way, she punishes her daughter by not showing up at her wedding. Happy birthday if today's your birthday and on with the revamped show. A little backstory. My husband and I have been best friends since middle school. We officially went out in 8th grade, but his entitled mother couldn't stand another woman having his attention. He's the baby of the family. So she told him to break up with me and disobedient kids go to hell. She's very religious. He was emotionally manipulated since then, and it ended when we got married. My husband has always been obedient to his parents, never rebelled, grew up singing in church, and always helped out at home. EM always got her way and is a show off to her brothers and sisters because she'll emotionally manipulate my, now, husband to buy her designer things. Not gonna lie, he makes great money and has worked his way up his company. He gets it for her because he believed he's a bad son for not complying. He paid for 90% of her bills, bought her a new RV despite having a mortgage and four cars because, in her words, it's always been her dream that we go camping as a family. He also paid for her credit card debt and bought a $2,000 couch when it was almost paid off by my husband. She also used the same credit card that my husband is paying off to have a vacation to Canada. She believes that because she is his mother who birthed him and now he owes her. It got so bad that he still had a curfew at 22, despite paying almost all of the bills in the house. We missed out on so many things because he had to be home at a certain time. So when we announced that my husband and I were getting married, she disapproved because she knows she's no longer able to emotionally manipulate him if he doesn't live in her home. The day before our wedding, he tried to convince her and she said no. He still went on with our wedding and we got our own place away from both parents. When we got married, I explained to him how he's being emotionally manipulated and he didn't owe her for being born. He woke up and realized all the things he has done for her and told her he's no longer giving her money because he's got his own family now. And it still hurt that she didn't show up for our wedding. She subtly blames me because she had to get a second job to pay for the things my husband would usually pay for and that my husband would never visit her. He also had panic attacks because he would get yelled at for staying late at work past his curfew. We're both in a great state mentally now, despite the fact his mum still tries to stir drama. He gives her money here and there when she really needs it, but that's about it. I think the saddest thing in stories like these is when the people don't even know that they're being emotionally manipulated. It just makes me mad when there are people taking advantage of other people who just don't know any better, especially when they're trying to take advantage of their compassion and generosity, two qualities that are some of the best qualities a human being can have. Doing something like that to a stranger is bad enough, but doing it to your own family, your own child, the person that you're supposed to be taking care of, you're supposed to be providing for, that's just a next level of messed up. Well, where do I start? I can't really complain about my childhood, but behind the facade, some things went wrong. There are some money and trust incidents that have caused me to not keep in touch with my mother for 12 years. The context. My father always went to work while my mother raised me and my two younger siblings. My father was a simple construction worker and has always worked hard for his money. We talk about herniated disc and arthros hard. My father officially earned 30k a year after taxes and insurances. Unofficially, probably a bit more. My grandfather had a small construction company, 20 employees, and a large house and generous property, which my parents inherited. The house was worth about 350k at the time, fully paid off. The story. When I was about 12 years old, my grandfather had already died. We had to sell the house. No one could tell us children why. We probably would not have understood it anyways. We moved into a small house for rent and took a vacation, which costs a fraction of the house worth. That's what we thought at least. But it turned out the holiday costs were all that was left from selling the house. Of course, we liked the holiday very much and we wanted to go there again next year. My father said that was no problem and started to save for the holiday. The next year, day of the flight. Luggage packed, flight tickets in an envelope in the table, we thought. My mother, gone. My father, visibly nervous because my mother isn't there. 
The flight leaves without us. My father opens the envelope. Inside, a letter. My mum's handwriting. Hey, listen up. We weren't able to pay for holidays and I'm leaving you. We were devastated. A few weeks passed. My parents somehow got back together again. Everything seemed to be normal again. My father was mistrustful. Opened a savings account without my mother's knowledge. My siblings and I wanted a game console. The decision was between Nintendo 64 and Sega Dreamcast. Because the games were cheaper, we opted for the Dreamcast. My father took us to the flea market so we could sell our toys to earn money for the Dreamcast. We owned it for about six months until it disappeared in a mystical way. A few years later after my confirmation, age of 13 or 14, to my confirmation I got about 500 euro. It was not much, but enough to buy me a shirt that I wanted unconditionally a Nokia 3310, and there was still about 350 euro left. I keep these in my room. One day, I forgot my mobile phone at home. When I came home, I couldn't find it anymore. It had disappeared. Until today. At the time, the Nintendo GameCube was released. I wanted to buy it from my money, so I went to my hiding place. Empty. I asked my siblings if they had taken it. They would never do such a thing, but I asked anyway. They didn't have it of course, but they didn't make any purchases that could have been made for that money. So I asked my parents. My father was completely astonished. My mother was very angry. No physical violence or anything. The money has never reappeared. I started delivering newspapers to earn money for GameCube. Some years later, I am in the age of about 16 now, we move again, this time an even smaller flat. Life is okay-ish. We don't have money for fun things like cinema, but we don't need to starve. Summer holidays, my last year of high school, age 16 to 17. My father wants to go with us to the amusement park. My mother has no desire. She loves amusement parks. So my dad drives us kids alone. He stops at the bank, wants to withdraw money from the savings account. Empty. He asks the bank how that can be. They tell him that married couples, despite password protection, always have access to savings accounts. First of the month, added euro. Third of the month, taken away. My dad is ticked off. We children, disappointed. We go home, my mother is gone. Her answering machine, don't even try, I'm dead to you. My father changes the door locks. I accompany him to the authorities and bank because he can often be hot headed when he is nervous and we need solutions. We get many things under control. I learn to cook, to wash the laundry properly, actually throw the whole household. I'm good with numbers and I'm going to take care of the finances. It doesn't look good, but we can do it. My youth is over. I don't blame my dad for that. One night it's still holidays. I hear a cough in the garden. I think nothing of it. Then again, the cough. Then again. I go out and follow the cough. There lies my mother, sleeping in the shed, covered with a towel. She wakes up, sees me and leaves. That was the last time I saw her. In the following months, we get many letters from lawyers and courts about unpaid bills. My father has to file for bankruptcy. One evening, men dressed in black are standing in front of our door, armed with clubs. My 12-year-old sister was in huge fear. Reminder, my father worked on construction site. He didn't let himself be intimidated. My dad was okay. I didn't see what happened exactly. If he tells the truth, he jumped out of the car the second he saw them. Grabbing a tool from work and being a behemoth, he had quite a good position to bargain. Perhaps that the guys were the first warning with no intention of physical harm. We paid the debts, we owed the guys. My mom tried to get in contact with me and my siblings for some time. My sister even moved in with her when she hit puberty and had girl problems. I can even understand why my sister did that. Living with men can be rough when money is tight and you're a young girl with puberty problems. Sometimes I think I am way too hard for not wanting contact, because she is my mum. On the other hand, I think screw her, she betrayed you, your dad, and your siblings. You have to wonder what drives a person to that point where they would do that to their own kids and their husband. You know it's one of those situations where she's probably justifying it in her own head. She obviously knows that it's wrong, but she doesn't care and she does it anyway. I like to think that the next generation always has a chance to learn from the mistakes of their parents, but there's no guarantee of that either. This happened a few months ago on the 1st of May. The backstory. On the 1st of May, we Germans celebrate the day of work. 
where ironically, nearly nobody works except for people in public or medical services. I'm a fully trained nurse myself, and this story happens when I was on my way to work. I live with my mum, my stepdad, and his family. His mum and dad, his sister and her husband with two small kids. In a fairly big house. Everyone has their own flat, but we enjoy living together. And have many family activities. Story time. Yay! EM is entitled mum, brat is B, awesome uncle AU, and awesome aunt AA. Ah, the 1st of May. As I explained above, we Germans celebrate the day of work. In some parts of Germany, there are big protests and such, but in the city here and around of my city, we come all together and drink, watch live concerts, eat and just have fun. There are still people that actually need to work, like poor nurse me, but crap happens. My family house is really close to the place where these celebrations are held. It's so lucky when I do get free time. There are also other celebrations held, but the 1st of May was the day it happens, so... It was just when I was ready to leave for work. I had much time to spare, but I'm a busy bee and like to be early at my workplace. Not thinking anything bad, I waved goodbye to my little step cousins that were waiting for the parents to go to the celebrations, and closed the front door. Walking to my car that was parked in our driveway, I thought about what was ahead of me for my day. I'm a trained nurse and even if it was a holiday, it could get stressful. Just as I was about unlocking my car, I saw another car pulling up at our driveway. I didn't really think about it. Maybe the person in the car just wanted to drive a bit in, so he could more easily turn around? The parking spots in my street were already full and crowded, as the celebrations were at the time on full. But the person stopped in the middle of the driveway, making it impossible to move my little car past them. At this point, I should have guessed what happened next. But my brain didn't register fully what happened. Maybe because I was thinking of my workday ahead. Or maybe because sometimes I'm a bit dumb. The person turned off their car and left it. A woman and her two kids. I guess they were teens, but I'm crap at age guessing. They left the car and walked in the direction of the festival. This made me a little confused. Because you could clearly see that the driveway belonged to our house. And this makes it private property. So I called out to them. Not only once, not twice, no, three times. Maybe they didn't hear me or they didn't want to. I was giving them the benefit of the doubt. Uh, excuse me, hello? Please stop, you can't park here. EM after finally turning around after my slightly confused calling. Why can't I park here? The other spots are full and that's the only free place. Cause this is private property. I know, we live here. That's my house. It's not a problem. Yeah, we live here. That's my room up there. Pointing at the flat of my step-grandma and granddad. No, I don't think so. At this point, the brat and other kid looked at me annoyed. I don't know why, but they did. And the EM walked closer to me with a slightly annoyed smile. Oh, of course. How would you know it? I lived there for three years now. That's my house. And my kids live there with me. Are you saying I'm lying? At this point, I started to get a bit annoyed. I lived there with my family for the last 10 years. When my mum and I moved in, I was 15 and we still live there. Clearly the woman had seen me getting to my car that was in the driveway. Uh, yeah, I do, cause I live there with my parents and my aunt and uncle and my grandparents. Unless I gained overnight a new aunt that I don't know about, you don't live here. Could you move your car? I need to go to work and... At this point, EM goes up to my face, as if I called her and her bloodline some bad name and starts screaming in my face. You are lying, that is my house, I live here. You can't tell me where to park my car in my driveway. Why are you parking here? I'm gonna call the cops. As she rants on and on about how I don't belong here, my aunt and uncle come out with the kids. What's going on OP? Is everything all right? Who is this woman? I give them both a quick summary of what the woman told me and they both look at each other a bit confused. Uh, we, we live here. With my in-laws and OP's mum and dad. Who are you? Get your car away. EM looking embarrassed and clearly lost, tried to find another excuse as why she was allowed to park there. Even going so far as to trying to make us believe that she can park there because my parents allowed it. They would have told me or my aunt and uncle. But in the end, they gave up, stormed with the two kids in tow back into a car. 
Brad gave us the finger, which I gave back and drove off. Funny thing is, if she just asked if she could park there and let me go to work, I would have let her. I know how hard it is to find parking spots on such a day, but being a liar and shouting didn't make it better. I don't know what it's like where you live, but where I live, there are signs that stop you from parking in residential areas if it's a really busy spot, which means the neighbors can get the car towed if they aren't supposed to be parked there. But what would you have done? Would you have decided to make it harder to get to work because you couldn't leave and end up getting the lady's car towed to teach her a lesson? Or would you do the same thing and basically argue with them until they finally move their car? Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.